Thank you for joining us for this information session. Tonight, we will be discussing the online and part-time graduate programs in technical and engineering management offered through the Whiting School of Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. My name is Cheryl Williams, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Marketing for the Whiting School. With me is Dr. Tim Collins. Cheryl, thank you very much. Let's start with just a quick overview. The two programs we're here to talk about tonight are the technical management degree and the engineering management degree. And in addition to the full master's program, we also offer certificate options, which are certainly something to think about for folks that uh, already have a master's degree or they, they need a very specific uh, course sequence to help them with their uh, current jobs. By way of comparison, let's first start with just thinking about engineering management and technical management. If today you work in the systems acquisition domain, perhaps as a program manager or a project manager, then it's quite likely that the technical management degree would be the one that's most helpful to you. It provides you with the background and the programmatic needs of systems development and management, while also offering you the leadership skills that you need to be a successful program manager. However, if you find yourself as a line manager, whose staff is generally working on a technical problem at a system or component level, then quite likely the engineering management program would be better. That program in particular is intended to advance both your technical skills in a specific area, specific area, while you're also working on uh, a set of management skills to enhance your ability to manage technical personnel and then develop the leadership capabilities. So that's the difference between the technical management and the engineering management. Now another uh, comparison that we should talk about briefly is the engineering management with the uh, Masters of Business Association or the MBA. Some people sort of as shorthand think of engineering management as an MBA for engineers. That's actually not a very useful comparison. The Masters in Business Administration, or the MBA, is designed for people who are going to do deep financial analysis so that they can uh, provide information back at uh, various programs or often in a consulting role. That degree focuses on case studies, on industry, on understanding the analytics from a financial perspective. An engineering management degree is going to make sure you're conversational in the financial and analytical aspects, but the degree is much broader than that because it's used to apply towards work in a technical domain. As an engineering manager, you're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, transdisciplinary teams, and on your teams are going to be financial managers and financial analysts. So we want to equip you with the ability to have a meaningful conversation with them to understand what they're telling you so that you can make data-driven decisions, but not to be able to do the very deep financial analysis yourself. So for both these programs, they're two to three years, there's 10 courses, and they're available, uh, both of them fully online from wherever you're at. So the degree structure for the technical management degree, there are uh, 10 courses, you have five years to complete it. Most people tend to complete it in two to three years. There is one core course that we take, it's the introduction to project management. You can think about this as the planning and management of projects. And then you select a, a focus area where you'll find uh, five to eight courses, and then the rest of them are just filled in by electives. So that's the overall structure. So let's go to the next slide now and we'll look at the focus areas. These are the five focus areas. You would choose one of those, and there's core inside of each of those, as well as electives for each of those. So that's the very top level view of the technical management degree. All right, let's go to the next slide and talk about engineering management. So an engineering management master's degree, there are five core management courses. And then in addition to that, you will pick a technical concentration and you'll take five courses in that concentration. And we'll take a look at the concentrations in just a minute, but the overall structure is still the same, 10 courses within five years. So let's first start look, with a look at the management core. 
So these are the courses that are offered, and from these you would choose five. You can think about this as the management or leadership aspect of your degree. Uh, two of these are 700 level courses, and the others are 600 level courses. The prerequisites for a 600 level course is essentially you're, you're admitted into the program, and then you have to take some of the 600 level courses before you're academically ready to take the 700 level. So as I said, there's five courses here. How about your other five? Well, for this, you would pick a technical area of concentration. So we'll go to the next slide. And these are the current concentrations that we have associated with this degree. So that's the overall framework. And why don't we talk about the application process now? Uh, Cheryl, are you ready for that? Yes, I am. To submit your application for admissions, uh, you first step is to visit our online application. You can find that at ep.jhu.edu backslash apply. Uh, and then in addition to that form, uh, you'll need to submit your academic transcripts and your professional resume. Tim, would you like to discuss the admissions requirements for your programs? Yes, Cheryl, I would. Thank you so much. So you're required to have a bachelor's degree in a science or engineering technically oriented degree. There are exceptions to that. I'll talk about it in just a moment. We're looking for a GPA of 3.0 in your undergraduate work and at least two years relevant work experience. This is a engineering for professionals program. Part of the value, the unique value of this program is you're surrounded by colleagues who are actually out there doing engineering work, engineering management work uh, today. So we do require the two years work experience, one, so you can contribute, and two, so you can uh, take the maximum away from the course because you'll understand what people are talking about when they talk about how to do technical group management because you've actually seen it yourself. On the bachelor's degree, we are finding that there, there is a need um, occasionally people to learn how to actually manage technical projects. And they may be in the health fields, they may be in other fields. So we look for in the resume some sort of indication that you can technically keep up with the program. So if you do not have a bachelor's degree in, an, in a technical field, that don't stop, let's talk about it. And then the last thing we do not require for either one of these degrees, the GRE. Next slide. The review process generally takes four to six weeks. My advice to students as they're thinking about entering into a master's program is at the beginning of the semester prior to when you want to start your academics, that's a good time to go through the admissions process. That'll ensure that when registration is open for the semester or the term in which you want to start your academics, everything is all taken care of. The dates to remember here is spring registration opens a month from today. So if you're thinking about, I'd like to start my program in January of 2019, now is the time to start the admissions process. And then we begin the term on the 28th of January. But I tell people to pay a lot of attention to when registration opens because courses fill up fast. And uh, if you are a little slow in taking care of the admissions process, you may be ready to start by the January 28th, but there's no telling what the course selection would look like if you're just trying to register, say, the middle of January of 2019. All right, next step. So let's quickly review our next steps here and then we'll dive right into your questions. I've seen them pouring in. Uh, so again, if you're interested in starting with us, your first step is to submit your application. Then next to submit your transcripts and your professional resume. Uh, and then here are the important dates that we reviewed just a couple of moments ago. Spring registration opens on October the, the 25th, so right around the corner, and the spring term begins on January the 28th.